sound design. There's one calculator that I use a lot in the field, which is the air absorption calculator that I wrote. It keeps me from losing my sanity. Sound design. Sound Design Live is produced independently by me, Nathan Lively, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Welcome to Sound Design Live, the show to help you build your career as a sound engineer and the home of the world's first online career coaching program optimized for audio professionals. I'm Nathan Lively, and today I'm joined by Bob McCarthy, Merlin Van Veen, Mauricio Ramirez, and Daniel Lundberg. So Bob, Merlin, Mauricio, Daniel, welcome to Sound Design Live. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yes, same here. Thank you. (laughs) So I definitely want to talk a lot about audio calculators today. This is an audio calculators roundtable, but first of all, what is your favorite piece of music to decompress to at the end of a long day? The sounds of silence. Uh, Mauricio, what about you? I follow both guidelines. <laughs> I don't listen to anything. Uh, what about you, Merlin? Oh, I'm afraid that it's the same for me. Lately, I've been listening to Random Access Memory by Daft Punk. Doing it right. Everybody will be dancing and we're feeling it right. Everybody will be dancing and be... Merlin, why don't we start with you? I think you're in Italy today, right? And, and what are you working on today? Yes. Buonasera from Italy. I am doing, a, I'm doing in a, an in-company training in Italy. And, and uh, we're doing both trainings. We're doing part one, which is the basic stuff. And then we do uh, a one-day break, and then we do part two, which is what I've come to call the power tools. It's basically what everything, what everyone wants to learn, preferably without having to do part one. Sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, and how's that going? It's going great, um, as far as I can tell. So I'm having great fun, and the facilities here are great. And uh, I'm in a near anechoic room, which makes for ex- really great, wow. you know, That's perfect, amazing. perfect. Ex- perfect examples so it's, i'm having cool. a good time um bob what about you where where are you at today and what are you working on i'm at home today uh yesterday i um was on a panel at the tsdca that's the theatrical sound design and composers association okay uh with nevin steinberg kai harada and nicholas pope uh, who are Broadway sound designers, and we had a nice talk yesterday, and then uh, <clears throat> we just survived uh, some dates uh, around the New York area with Metallica. Is that a new band? <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Okay. I feel like they've been around for a while. All right, I'll, I'll look uh, them up. Okay. And then coming up, I've got uh, some uh, education work that I'm uh, finally having a window to get into. And then I have a little bit of uh, vacation time with mom. Oh, uh, and Mauricio, where are you at today and uh, what are you working on? I'm in my home. I was with Bob in, in some dates last week with, with the Metallica guys. I will take this week to um, improve the calculators uh, after, after doing the 40 channel intermodulation microphone calculator, I figured out that I can uh, try to make some improvements in all the other calculators, not in the equation, but just in the appearance, at least to to make the appearance. And some of the calculators are, I will put like, there are two or three calculators that are different ones. I will try to put three calculators in one calculator instead of having like, like 40 ones to finish only with 10. This is what, this is my plan. And, and uh, in my son, we are doing a update in all the information for seminars. So, Daniel, where are you today, and um, what are you working on? Today, I'm uh, back in New York City at my apartment for the first time since August, I think. Well, oh, wow. for an American in Paris, okay. drive from Portland, Oregon to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, and I will meet those trucks in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on Sunday where I'll continue being the head of sound for an American in Paris on tour. Okay, cool. And uh, so the tour is going well so far? You're enjoying head of sound? 
It's going great. Uh, we got a good group of people uh, who care about having a good sounding show and it ends in clapping. <laughs> nice success. All right. So when I started um, asking around about people's favorite audio calculators, some of the first answers that I got were things like, oh, I like DMB Array Calc. I like Meyer Sound Map XT. And then I realized, oh, uh, I didn't really define calculator. Um, and initially I was thinking not Map XT, um, not kind of array designers. I was thinking of other things, but then I realized that I shouldn't necessarily discount those because all I'm really going for here is anything that will help us do some math to get from point A to point B. So if you want to talk about sound vision and how it's the best calculator to accomplish a specific task, I want to hear about it. So in, in, during any of the conversation today, I'm kind of like, it's kind of anything goes. Just first of all, like if you could have one calculator that would be kind of like your desert island calculator, uh, if you could just have one to take with you and use forever and always, which would that be? So Merlin, I'm going to start with you and then I'll just go around to everyone in the group. Oh, if I had to choose of one application, I would probably bring my analyzer, Okay. Um, which in my case happens to be smart. But um, in general, I would bring a dual channel FFT analyzer. Are you thinking about doing some calculations in smart or you're just talking about being able to measure with your audio analyzer well audio calculators make my life easier but with access to a, a dual channel analyzer you know it's like a swiss army knife um i can find all the answers that i'm looking for even without the help of an audio calculator so that's that's my take on you know if i have to choose one thing to bring to a desert island um, so what about you, Mauricio? What comes to mind when I say like desert island calculator to you? <laughs> if in this desert island there is a, a PA system uh, <laughs> and there will be people to go to concerts, I think, uh, as you know, my my favorite calculator is the Merline uh, Subwoofer Array Designer, okay. where Bob and myself were lucky to be part of the, of the beta testers of this calculator. I use this calculator for for many, many occasions where I arrive into the venue and I have been there when this is a design that in my case is been is been doing using map map XT and we design let's say a bunch of subwoofers that are fly or subwoofers that are in fire and eventually a person that I will not say the name because I don't even remember but says this buffer will not go in the way you Meyer guys want. They will just be a pile of left and right. And it's been around 20 something subwoofers and you can pile only three. So this produce a very long pile and this produce a very narrow directivity in the subwoofer system. So in the center, this is no low, no low end and it's only very basically outside the subwoofers, this is no sound. So then this is where I found the Merline calculator very helpful because then I introduce straight line with electronically will do like arc, introduce the values of what is this dimension of the subwoofer, how many I have, and mm -hmm. what is this dispersion pattern that I am looking for. And this will tell me how many milliseconds I have to put from the subwoofer from the center to the outer. And it works pretty amazing. And I can also make like a symmetrical pattern. I can make the, the, the delays go more like one side to the other. So the pattern can go in inside or outside, or I can explore making a, a 60 degree pattern or, 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 or 80 degree pattern to feel it. Because as soon as you start to spread the sound, the SPL at the center of the array drops. So then it's a compromise in, in what is the expectation of the mixer guy. And some mixer guys expect a lot of low end, mostly where they are. But some mixer guys expect more even level everywhere, everywhere in the in the horizontal plane, let's say. So if the mixer guy says, I don't care really about outside my front of house position, okay, but if the mixer guy says I want more even dispersion, well so Merline calculator is to me has been is solving me a lot of calculations, trying to use map XT and try to uh -huh. do trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, spending one hour, and then you are in the middle of of, of, uh, of Colombia in, in a place that you don't have a cellular Wi-Fi or cellular sure. Wi-Fi. So the only thing is, is to use Maryland calculator, and I know that this works. 
So I can say that this is my favorite calculator ever. In that situation you described, it sounded like it really facilitated the conversation. One person was saying, ah, this isn't going to work. And instead of you just saying, yes, it will work because nothing, like you had something you could both look at together and you could say, here's what we need to do and here's what the prediction will look like. And you could have a better conversation about it. And on the other hand, I can show frequency response graphics at, at different virtual microphone locations. I can see colors. So it will facilitate or make easy to be system tech of the sound company to the mixer guy to be convinced that the approach will work. Bob, what about you? Is there one calculator that you would choose above all others if you could only take one? You know, Merlin said he would take the NFFT analyzer and... Um, of course, I would do that. When we initiated this call, I didn't really consider the FFT analyzer to be a calculator. I think of it as, an, as a measurement tool. So when I think of calculator, I think of things like Merlin's SAD. To me, the critical ones are, well, there's several of them that I've already memorized all the values of. So I guess I don't have to bring that up uh, to my desert island because I already have memorized, and that's the or the dB scale and all the ratios mm. that you do for the 20 log dB scale. Okay. The calculator I use the most in my design work is the Lundberg calculator. That does much more than just uncoupled array. Um, essentially, that also provides you with the coverage width, or what I call the lateral aspect ratio. So that if you want to see whether or not you need a center fill to speaker to be added, you can use the, the Lundberg calculator, and it will it will bring you the the width of that of the your left and right on the floor, and then you look at and measure across the floor, and you'll know whether or not you make it to the center. If you don't make it to the center, you need a center fill. If you do make it to the center, you don't. Then from there, how much of a center fill do I need? And these things. So you know, I'll use them for spacing front fills. I'll use them for spacing mains. I'll use them for answering those kind of questions, under balcony questions, those kind of things. I'm wondering, Merlin and Mauricio, do you guys also use Daniel Lundberg's calculator? I am using it um, all the time. I still use the old Excel version. Yes, yeah, same here. Here's the thing. Daniel wrote a newer version in Python, which allows you to export the designs into Map, which is a great feature. But for example, one thing the newer version doesn't do is what if somebody predetermined where your front fills are to go? Somebody made some holes in the stage lip, and that's what you have to use. Well, the Excel version will also allow you to calculate what loudspeaker do I need to have sufficient coverage when somebody predetermined where the speakers are to go right. and yet have coverage starting at, for example, the first row after three feet or one meter. And uh -huh. this is something the newer version does not allow you to do. So I use both, but I also still have a lot of love for the Excel version for that very reason. It helps because so many times the sound company guys or promoter or manager wants to have certain number of front fields and, and, and this calculator of, of Daniel, I use it to demonstrate that we may need two more because this can export to map. I export this right. to show that if we use less than that, we will have areas that are not properly covered. Well, if I could only take one, it would be the manufacturer's prediction software for the speaker rig I had that day. Right. Okay. And the speaker rig we have on an American in Paris is a DNB sound system designed by John Weston to fit all of these different touring houses. And within this system, we have a couple of line arrays in our center cluster. We have some under balcony fills. We have some point sources on our proscenium. And we have a point source downfill speaker that uh, it would be very hard to figure out by eyeballing how to point it. So DNB's array calc covers all of our basic needs for that sound system in one place. And uh, I could certainly do the load in just with DNB array calc. And it would be difficult to do the load in without DNB array calc. Wow. So I guess one of your responsibilities as head of sound is to, as soon as you arrive on site, start taking measurements and open up the DNB array calc prediction software to figure out how things are going to get hung and splayed and aimed and stuff like that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and it's it's one of the more fun parts because it will vary drastically from theater to theater. A lot of these theaters on the Broadway circuit are very different shapes from each other. Mm -hmm. 
Some will have four balconies and be very tall. Others will be wide with one balcony. And the points available for where to hang clusters, how to hang under balcony fills will also vary drastically from theater to theater. So is there maybe a calculator that you're using often when you're just kind of in the design phase, you're at your computer, in your office, whatever, you're looking at predictions, you're looking at uh, designs and photos that people are sending you. Bob, is there one calculator that you're using more often for this kind of work? The primary work is the lumber calculator, then the the calculation uh, that converts 20 log dB uh, to ratios and ratios to 20 log dB. So the lumber calculator might give me the spacing of my front fills, okay? But do, do I need, which which model of front fills do I need? Well, there I'm going to use the ratio by looking at the SPL of my mains versus the SPL of, of a particular front fill and then the difference in the range ratio between those. Uh, converted to dB. So, for example, if my mains had to travel 10 meters to get there and my front fill had to get travel 1 meter to get there, there's your 10 to 1 ratio, there's 20 dB, so I could have a front fill that was 20 dB down from, from the mains. But I wouldn't want one that was, I wouldn't want to waste money on one that was 10 dB down, or I wouldn't want one that was 30 dB down uh, because it would get blown up. Sure, trying to be efficient. It's one of the figures in my first chapter of my book. I believe it's figure 1.14. And Mauricio, are you using any other calculators for your design work? For design work, uh, it's the same the same two that, that I mentioned before, the, the Merline for doing subwoofer and the Daniel Lumberg for doing for doing front fields. Uh, Merlin, same same question for you. Do you have another calculator that you're using for design work? One of my favorite tools is an application which is called Pixel Stick. And pixel stick like, uh, allows you to measure the distance between two pixels on your desktop. Because here's the thing, when I do a design, most of the time we are provided with two-dimensional drawings. Maybe a plan view, maybe a section view. Pixel stick will allow me to instantaneously measure the distance between two points. And then I can apply Bob McCarthy's um, forward aspect ratio and lateral aspect ratio to come up with the correct speaker without having to actually import the drawings first into proprietary software like Map or Sound Vision. Mm, so that's using cool. Pixel it's like a it's like a ruler for your pixels. It's like screen. a ruler mm -hmm. because Bob's far and Lar, you know, they are unitless. It doesn't matter whether it's millimeters, inches, or you know, parsecs or light years. So having a sense of scale, having a sense of geometry quickly allows me to come up with, you know, the correct element for a particular challenge. And then, you know, using pen and paper, I do most of my designs. And once I've figured out the design, I will import it into, you know, proprietary software. But I find myself verifying it very often in MAP because one of the nice things about MAP is that you actually also get to look at phase responses and impulse responses, which is a nice thing. And needless to say, of course, I use Daniel's calculator and my own subwoofer A designer. Mm -hmm. and, fi and finally, there's one application which I find is very interesting, which is Rita by Pepe Ferrer from Spain. What's that? Rita is an uh, attempt by Pepe Ferrer of Etica Sound at making his own analyzer. But one of the things I like about it is, is that today we can store our measurements also as an impulse response in a WAV file. And we can import this WAV file into Rita, and then I can play around with filters to see how they how they work in a, in a fashion which is very similar to what we do in um, virtual Galileo in Compass, for example. So I can play with actual loudspeaker data, manipulate it using um, all-pass filters or high-pass filters or low-pass filters, and then get an idea of how I might you know go about a certain challenge on the actual day of commissioning the system. So Rita is really, um, for that, for me, Rita in that regard is a really interesting application because it allows me to manipulate the data as if I were working on a real processor with data that I captured and stored myself. Oh, that's interesting. So you could potentially do your tuning in multiple steps where maybe you just come and you do a site visit and you take a couple of measurements and you don't actually make any decisions, then you just go back home and then you could potentially load it into Rita and like try 
try out some filters and, and see what would happen. Exactly. I'm going to throw in one more thing. On, in regards to the, the subwoofer array designer uh, and subwoofer array designs, it, it to me, um, I you know, learned a lot uh, from that program. And in this case, if I'm a lot of the subwoofer array designs now are, are it's like, okay, you feel like you're just taking the stamp out and, and you stamp in this one mm-hmm. and stamp in that one. I, I have these known blocks. Uh, if I've got five boxes, this is what I'm going to do. If I've got six, this is what I'm going to do. And, um, but anytime I'm confronted with something unusual or uh, uh, unknown, that's the great resource then to, to go back to. That's the, you know, one of the beauties of subwoofers is that once you get these blocks to work, they become a very well-known entity, and then you don't have to recalculate them a hundred times. Sure. Um, but uh, then when it's time to learn a new one, uh, that's a, a, a great resource. By contrast, the 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 Lundberg calculator helps you to fit things into the real shape all the time. I got six devices. Uh, how, how far can I stretch them? Or, right. or how do I, like Magoo was saying, how can I convince them to go with, with eight? When Merlin was talking about the pixel stick, that's an interesting one because I have to tell you, I can't tell you how much time I end up designing systems where I don't have an internet connection in airports or on airplanes or all these kind of places. Oh, sure. So I've done a whole, I do a whole lot of designs where I do the entire design in map and never even run a prediction. Um, and in that case, you're and, using architectural visual aids, I guess, to measure stuff like that. You're using those ratios of the shape. I know what the coverage shape is from the, from the FAR ratio and from the LAR ratio and those things. And, um, that's where you. That's where you work from. There's, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot you can do if you know what the shapes of a these speakers are, um, with just knowing length and width. Daniel, is there an audio calculator that you feel like that you find yourself going to more often? Well, I use the uncoupled array calculator a fair bit when designing uncoupled arrays. Right. In between doing theater shows and corporate audio, I've worked for a theme park design firm on and off, and I've worked for a theater consulting firm. And a lot of managing those big projects uh, requires looking at the costs of different possibilities for a sound system. So when designing big projects in an early phase, uh, we make a lot of tools, sometimes just for that particular project, that help us do quantity takeoffs on our AutoCAD drawings that help us do budgeting and uh, also help us compare different options to each other. And perhaps we'll uh, we'll reference the manufacturer's price list for the speakers we're looking at using. So you can save yourself a lot of time by creating tools that help you budget for a particular project. There are also some other not acoustic calculators that will help you with things like planning for power, uh, how much power you're going to use, what the BTU load of that equipment is in that amp room so you can have an idea of what to tell the HVAC people, planning for voltage loss over cable distance and that sort of thing. Okay, so, so, so give me an example. Give me an example of a budgeting tool that you're using and give me an example of a power tool that you're using. For power tools, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I usually Google power voltage drop calculator okay. uh, to, to find whatever comes up. And, and I guess the math is pretty simple, but I don't know the math. And it seems like there are a lot of options out there for it. Okay. Calculating amperage is pretty straightforward. Meyer, I know, has a tool for calculating amperage for their products. Uh, but it's pretty easy to find a spec sheet for uh, something that shows what its amperage is, tell your spreadsheet how many of that you have, and then be able to figure out what your amperage draw is by location. Got it. And uh, I'm sorry, you asked me about... uh, Oh, but at the largest scale, we were working on a theme park that had hundreds of attractions in many different subsections of the theme park. And so we wrote a giant web of 
Excel calculators and database things and AutoCAD data extracts that would go and look at each AutoCAD drawing, extract information about the speakers that we dropped into the plans for each of these attractions, uh, import that into a big table that was basically speakers by attraction, and then based on the type of speaker and the type of DSP that attraction needed, we could do a very rough budget pass for how much DSP we would need there, what the approximate cost of infrastructure would be, uh, what the total cost of speakers was, and then we could go from the actual ground plans with speakers to a breakdown of cost by attraction. And this was early in the, the design phase, so it was uh, absolutely a rough guess, but it was a pretty good rough guess based on our past experience, and it let us know if we were in the ballpark. That sounds great. So I'm imagining that you are doing several different designs for all the different attractions, and that way you can have a kind of a different AutoCAD file, different AutoCAD project for each of those. And then um, you have this table that does a lookup for you and does basically a final price and says, this is how much this costs. And then if you go back and make a change later, you can just kind of recalculate and not need to do that all manually. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. Nobody needs to sit down with a ground plan and tally up speakers on a ground plan and the computer will take care of that for you. And did you say this is something that you created or this is something that I could get? That was something that I created for a particular project while I was working at Thinkwell. Okay. So uh, that particular solution only works with that theme park and is also uh, also belongs to Thinkwell, but uh, it's pretty straightforward to make similar tools if you have AutoCAD and you have Excel and uh, you have a little bit of time. Okay. <laughs> using um, Merlin Subaray Designer, you're using Daniel Lundberg's calculator in your design work. Are you also using those in the field? And if not, is there a calculator that you are using more often in the field? I don't know how much I use the any of those calculators in the field, although I do remember we, uh, we were recently working on subwoofer spacing uh, with Magoo and I, and uh, because we were we were stuck under a stage and having to work around the spacing of the scaffolding that holds up the stage. Okay. And um, so he had the uh, the SAD designer, and we worked with that to to push around subwoofers on wheels um, and see where we were adding and where we were subtracting. So that's a that's one case where I used it. In terms of the Lundberg, I might use it to uh, to show somebody why this isn't going to work, but I would probably actually, if I'm in the field, I'm going to show it to them by measuring it. I want to ask Merlin and Risi the same question, but I'm going to throw another one into the mix, which is a simple triangle solver. That's one of the apps that I use most often in the field when I just need to take two links of a triangle and an inside measurement of a triangle and then figure out all the other uh, pieces of the triangle. It's actually an app for my iPhone for iOS called Triangle Solver by William Jakush. So Merlin, what about you? Any calculators you're actually using in the field? Yes, there's one calculator that I use a lot in the field, which is the air absorption calculator that I wrote. Okay. Because it keeps me from losing my sanity. Okay. So what if what if you're doing a show and you're building the show during the day and there's a given temperature and a given humidity? And during the building of the show, you decide to emphasize the high frequencies to account for air losses. So you dial in six decibels to the far field. But then during sound check, temperature changes or maybe it starts raining. So the air absorption will change accordingly. And having an instance running of the air absorption calculator you know, allows me to verify what I can expect if the thermodynamic conditions change from, from building the show to sound check to show time. Because if the temperature and humidity change again and we come to the conclusion that by show time we lose another six decibels, what are you going to do? Add another six decibels to the high frequencies? Um, lowering your headroom and all that kind of stuff. So, yes, I like to use the air absorption to... Um, 
to keep track of those kind of things and not do um, not do things that are maybe ill-advised. And the other calculator that I use is my floor bounce calculator because at all times, if there is one reflection that you can expect, it's the one coming from the very floor that we're standing on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just if I do a rough estimate of where's the loudspeaker, where's the microphone, does that octave wide gap at 125 hertz, is that to be expected at ear height? And the floor bounce calculator, you know, greatly helps in, again, helping you <laughs> preventing losing your sanity. So sure. those are the ones, the ones that I like to use with field work. I guess you make it a habit then to write down the uh, environmental conditions each time you're you're doing some measurements. So it's during show build, you're writing down the temperature and humidity, uh, so that later during sound check and during the show you can compare and put those into the air absorption calculator. Well, the air absorption calculator allows me to calculate three instances. So what I typically do is that I keep the distance the same because we're at front of house anyway. I make note of temperature and humidity when we're building the show. And then I do it again during sound check. And then, you know, I have a third instance where I can keep track of anything that changes during the actual show and see, you know, where we have to go from there. Uh, so what about in the field, Daniel? You mentioned DMB Array Calc maybe on this tour, maybe on other shows that you've worked on, is there a tool, a calculator that you find that you're using a lot in the field? The field and Desert Island to me are, are pretty similar uh, because in the field, you're not going to spend a whole lot of time at a laptop if you don't have to. It's the manufacturer's design software for the rig that you're using. So on my last tour, I was using a Meyer PA with a couple of Melody line arrays. So I would use Map every day. The calculator that, that we've worked on together, the single loudspeaker aiming calculator, is very useful for single speakers that you can't eyeball and that you can't stand next to and focus by by putting your eye where the speaker is. Mm -hmm. uh, center cluster, for instance, it would be hard to get the down tilt exactly right when when you're standing on the orchestra pit lift and you don't really know exactly where this thing is going to land height wise and you don't know exactly when it's going to when coverage is going to start in the audience and when it's going to end and if it's on the center cluster truss you really don't want to bounce the center cluster truss uh when you fly it realize you're off and then bring it in and then keep bouncing it you want to get it right the first time so mm -hmm. that the center cluster truss stays up you can certainly use map or dnb array calc or your loudspeaker manufacturer's proprietary software to get a sense of how to aim that type of speaker, or you can use a, a single loudspeaker aiming calculator. Are you saying that you have used our calculator out in the field at some point? No. Okay. I've used, <laughs> I, I've used it uh, in the office for certain to when sitting with a section of a theater okay. to specify speakers like that. Perhaps if I was using a speaker that was not a DNB or Meyer speaker, it would certainly do the trick and it would do a trick that would be hard to do by guessing sure all right guys we're about halfway through today's episode and i want to let you know that this is a collaboration between merlin van veen and myself so first of all i want to say hello to everyone in merlin van veen's audience who's checking this out for the first time I hope you are enjoying it. And second of all, I know a lot of you are listening to this while you're driving to and from a gig or um, maybe setting up or breaking down, wrapping cable and stuff like that. And you don't have your hands for you to be taking notes. So I'm putting together a document for you called the Audio Calculators Roundtable Toolbox. And in that PDF document, I'm not only linking to all of the calculators that we talked about today, but I'm also giving some notes in there to give you context about how to use the thing once you get it. So if you want that, you're going to have to go to merlinvanveen.nl. And if you want to get there, just open up the show notes for this podcast and click on the link and it'll take you straight there. Mauricio, do you have anything to say about this? Any calculators you're actually using in the field? Well, the one that, that Merlin mentioned about the, the floor bounce, I use in the trainings because this proved the people that when they see a graphic with the analyzer, what portion of what they see is, is damaged in the response because the reflection. And normally what I take is, is let's have this speaker, let's have this microphone, let's measure exactly the position, let's introduce in data in the, in the Merlin calculator of floor bounds, and you will see where will be the comb filter and how that will be at different frequency range. 
Then huh. measure with the analyzer, the real speaker, and people will see exactly that. And I prove the people. So now if the microphone goes in this position and we change that instead of the microphone is three, three or five feet tall and change different, everything changes. And I use this to make people aware that you cannot equalize everything you see in the analyzer. Mm -hmm. And I make them to connect the coherence graphic. So, and you know, it's what I say. Don't trust in the analyzer 100% because there are things that the analyzer is just telling you, this is what happens exactly here. Mm -hmm. but, but this is not the reality everywhere. So this is a very educational calculator. And of course, that it can be used on, on the side because if, if I take a range finder and I measure where is the microphone, <coughs> where is the speaker, introduce the data in, in the calculator, and I do the measurement, I will not be surprised to see that, oh, 300 hertz goes down 10 decibels. Yes. But if you put the microphone in the floor, 300 hertz goes up and recover. But then other frequencies may be damaged. Right. So there are calculators that are for understand abstractions, that there are so many, many, many abstractions. And there are calculators that will help you to do the design and, the, and help you for the system tuning. I'm just going to say that Merlin's uh, floor bounce calculator is in development, but it's still at the ground level. Huh. <laughs> okay. So yeah, Mauricio was was talking about how he uses the floor bounce calculator in education. Um, that sounds like a great use for it. So Merlin, if you want to talk about what you like using in education in terms of calculators, the calculator that I use extensively is um, the face calculator that I wrote. The face calculator allows us to look at an oscilloscope for simple sine waves and see what happens if we introduce a phase offset. It also features a, a phaser scope, which allows us to see what happens if we introduce a phase offset and treat our, our signals as if they were phasers. And it allows us to look at you know, what happens if we delay two signals for 20,000 frequencies simultaneously, because I spend a great deal of teaching those abstracts, as Magoo calls them, how to read phase and you know, what is a comb filter and how does a level change affect the audibility of a comb filter? And we can observe the results in a similar fashion as we see in our analyzer on a linear scale and on a logarithmic scale. And the nice thing of a linear scale is because we see them side by side. On a linear scale, it's readily apparent why a comb filter is a comb filter. Unfortunately, on a logarithmic scale, not so much. So it's, I think it's, it's at the top of the list of the calculators that I use to um to explain the abstract which is you know reading face which is which is arguably the most abstract thing of you know of the things that sure, um, the four one. of us teach the floor bounce calculator is is basically an adaptation of the face calculator it's a variation and then there's two more calculators that I wrote one is called um sub align which basically allows me to to visualize uh, that part of the audience where everybody will be coupled between the main speaker and the subwoofer. And um, last but not least, the um, spatial distribution calculator, which allows me to see how uh, Bob's summation zone, so when we talk about the combing zone and the transition zone and the isolation zone, how these zones are distributed over space. because. You know, it does not just apply to your frequency responses to your transfer functions, but these zones also occur in space in our in our audience. So those are the four that I that I use extensively. Yeah, those are great. Um, I'm going to throw one in there, and then I'll I'll go back to you, Bob. Uh, there's a little app that I just started using um, with some of my students, but I think would also be great for the field, which is called Notepad Calculator, and it's at NotepadCalculator.com. And the nice thing is, is that I noticed that I uh, do a lot of quick calculations and then sometimes second guess myself. And so if I use Notepad Calculator, what that allows me to do is write down, like um, I measured this thing at 10 and I measured this other thing at 20 and the difference between 10 and 20 is 10. And then I can just keep writing all of my calculations as I go down the page and then I have a history of everything. And so if I wonder like, oh wait, did I measure 10 or did I measure 15? I can scroll back up and look and say, oh no, I measured 10. And then I can keep going. So Bob, um, any other calculators that you find are good for education that you maybe use in your seminars? I also spend a lot of time on the phase wheel and I, I end up doing an exercise similar to what Merlin described. I call it, I call it the crystal ball. Okay. 
And um, what, well, what I'll do is, for example, uh, take two speakers that are going to have an interaction and I'll measure one, take its picture, turn it off, and then measure the other one, look at its picture, and then you can see now the amplitude and the phase. You can see the two parts that are going to come together. And then you go through looking at the phase wheel. You're going to look at the phase relationship and looking at the dB uh, amplitude ratio. You're going to look at the relative levels. And then we go to the ball and I make everybody guess what's the picture going to look like when we turn the two speakers on together. Oh, nice. And what happens, of course, at first is everybody is shocked and stunned. But after you play the game enough times, they realize that if they know A and they know B, that they can predict the crystal ball does work. The addition of A and B is not a mystery. It's exactly what you're going to, what you can see is going to happen once you understand the relative amplitude and relative phase from those calculations. Nice. And uh, those the same things then you can apply to a floor bounce, which is not so easy to turn off a floor. Um, um, or to turn off a <laughs> sidewall, but it's all about using those calculators of the relative time ter- converted to relative phase, converted to are you going to add, are you going to subtract at a given frequency, and that's how the crystal ball uh, becomes clear and not foggy. Is there anything I didn't mention that you think people should know about? Anything, um, any little calculators that will help us do some math to, to help us do our job? Anything we didn't get to yet? I have one. Go ahead. Um, and I am racking my brain, so you have to edit this properly. And maybe Magoo would remember this guy's name. He made a calculator into a phone app. It's, it's called Acoustical Calculator. And then Danley ended up buying it, and it's called a Danley phone app. Oh. And it's... Yes, um, the guy from Chile, Sebastián Rivas. Sebastián Rivas. Sebastian, yes. Yeah. And that's a very cute little phone app. He's got a cardioid um, array thing, and he's got an acoustical calculator that does things like if you add up a 0 dB and a, and a, and a minus 3 dB, what do you get uh, if they're at 0 degrees? Or even what do you get if they're at 90 degrees? And it's... it's a, and he's got uh, Ohm's law in there. He's got DBU to DBM conversions. A uh, whole bunch of great little time is a uh, uh, F is uh, T O equals one over F. F is one over T. All that kind of stuff. Um, so that's a, a great little phone app. Um, I think it's nicely done. Uh, last but not least, we have a friend in Mexico, Mija Creek Schreiber, and he made oh, a nice scale. Mija Creek, yes. He made a nice calculator to do your own my correction curves for um, for smart to come up with your own my correction curves. Oh, really? Um, in order to calibrate your microphones. Hmm. Uh, explain that to me. Well, you know, you can buy a measurement microphone with a my correction curve, which right. is provided by the manufacturer. But uh, there is also a way to do them yourself. In fact, if you go to the forum of Rational Acoustics. You will find a recipe explaining how you can do your own uh, microcorrection curves. But Micha made a nice calculator that allows you to do a little bit of more tweaking and export these results in such a way that you can import them into Smart. So you can buy a ten dollar microphone and then make it uh, yep. same as a twenty five hundred DPA. You That's put it. in sow's sow's ear at the input and silk purse comes out of the output of the calculator. Well. You know, in all honesty, I have one more expensive DPA, you know, and I would hate the thought of somebody running over it. And I have four cheaper Audix microphones, and, and, and I, ended up, I ended up making my own correction curves, making my Audix report the same information as, um, as the DPA. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it's not calibrated to pressure, but they produce identical transfer functions, and yeah. ultimately, you know, that, that matters to me most. And Yes, exactly. So... It's an interesting uh, feature. And, and as long as they're stable, you're good to go. And you got to be on access, As long access, as right? they're stable, they're good to go. Um, you have to be on access. You know, the recipe is quite mm-hmm. involved, but you can do it within the confinement of your living room because the correction curves I ended up making were accurate within half a decibel, which is more mm-hmm. than enough for the, the line of work that I do. 
Exactly. So, like the the idea is that if you have uh, if you have the opportunity to use very expensive microphones and very expensive analyzer, let's say that what we can do in Meyer Sound. But if you don't have that, and the only thing that you have is a non-expensive mic and non-expensive software, <laughs> I think that this is better than not using any analyzer because otherwise, exactly. right, but just facey and polarity, it will be just guess. Uh, I can yeah. I can tell you as a as in the years I spent as a private um, company where I owned my own um, system, I didn't own eight DPA microphones. I owned eight Earthworks microphones because uh, I'd rather have eight of those than one DPA. As long as your mics are calibrated to each other, you know, that's to, that is indeed the most important thing. So such a calculator as described here is definitely a useful thing. I can tell you that for me, Every job I do, whether I've got DPAs on the job or whatever, I still go through and hand, you know, in person, by hand, go through and calculate all the mics. Um, well, this is good to know because I used to think if I didn't have matched microphones, I might as well only use one mic because if my microphones aren't, aren't matched, then I can't really do work comparing them. But if I can do this kind of correction and make them closer to each other, at least how, how I read them, then I can use multiple microphones. And the this, value of multiple microphones is, is a, you know, exponential. If I have three or four mics, uh, normally I measure any speaker, one speaker on axis with one mic, store, and in the same position place the second one, and see which one are more similar. And normally this is one that is like the the guy that is the rebel guy. So if I have four mics, well, the rebel guy will be the one that I will use to only align the impulses between front fields and down fields and delays and mains. This will be only for impulse. And the guys mm -hmm. that are similar is the one that I will use for take decisions in the frequency response. Mm -hmm. And even a guy that is not pretty good because in the high frequency is different to the others, if I am in an outdoor or in a stadium where you always have winds, the wind will screw up everything higher than 4 or 5K. So this means this is I use the, the microphone that is different <laughs> for going to the longest distance because I know that just ah. the wind will screw up the higher frequency. So, okay, right. I will use this mic to m obtain information only for the mids and lows. Pick the battles you can win. Yep. <laughs> right. Pick the battles you can win, yes. Or make other guy fight for you. <laughs> right. Sound design. I want to thank DJ Morsa for the great music in today's episode. If you want to hear more of his stuff, you can go to soundcloud.com slash djmore-3. That's DJ M-O-R-E-3. And again, if you want to get that audio calculators roundtable toolbox, you can do that in the show notes for this episode at merlinvanveen.nl.